AutoLine Daily is brought to you by Bridgestone, passion for excellence. Here are today's top headlines. Car sales were up in the American market, but they still stink. We get a sneak peek at the next Hyundai Sonata and Dodge dumps the Sprinter van. Up next, we'll be back with the news behind the headlines. This is AutoLine Daily for Wednesday, September 2nd, 2009, and now the news. We've got the full data on August sales for the American market, and while they were better, this is still not what you would call good. According to Wards, total sales hit 1.2 million units for the month for an annualized rate of 14 million vehicles. And while everyone seems happy, two years ago we would have called that a terrible number. Amongst the full-line manufacturers, Honda Acura were up 48%, Nissan Infiniti were up 46%, GM up 30%, Toyota Lexus Scion up 28%, FOMOCO up 10 and Chrysler, which pretty much ran out of inventory, up only 4%. To get a good read on how the Cash for Clunkers program affected sales, it's best to compare month over month instead of year over year. In other words, let's compare August sales to July, and by that measure, total sales were up 26%, by far the biggest increase we have seen in years. And sales incentives have also worked wonders in the Japanese and German markets. The Detroit Free Press reports sales in Japan were up 2.3% last month. And Germany says 2 million new vehicles were sold under its scrappage scheme. Honda just released official photos of the Accord Cross Tour, a weird looking combination of hatchback and crossover built off the Accord. I hope the front three-quarter view looks better in person than the ungainly look it has in this photo, though the rear quarter view isn't too bad. Honda hopes to broaden the Accord line by introducing the Cross Tour. Dodge is going to dump the Sprinter van, so now it will be sold under the Mercedes-Benz and Freightliner brands. Mercedes created a new subsidiary called Daimler Vans USA to handle all Sprinters in North America. I think it's a good bet that Chrysler could get a replacement from Fiat. The Iveco Daily is very similar to the Sprinter, and Iveco is Fiat's commercial vehicle division. Hyundai released two sketches of its next generation 2010 Sonata. The droopy belt line and coupe-like profile sure look like the trend-setting Mercedes-Benz CLS. Autoblog's running a couple of photos of the car that were leaked. The pics show a grille that look a lot like the VW Passat CC and headlights that are very similar to the CLS. The new Sonata will launch in South Korea on September 10. Kia will introduce a new sub-brand of eco-friendly cars called EcoDynamics at the Frankfurt Show. According to Wards, the models will feature technologies like stop-start hybrid systems, power-saving alternator management systems, and low-rolling resistance tires. In the future, Kia will add aerodynamic styling, alternative fuel systems, and hybrid electric and fuel cell powered vehicles for the brand. Kia will show three ecodynamic badged vehicles at the show, the Forte LPI Hybrid, Seed Hybrid, and Sorento Hybrid. We just got a chance to drive the new convertible version of the Nissan 370Z. It's shorter compared to the previous model and also 150 pounds lighter thanks to the use of an aluminum hood, deck lid, and doors. Mechanically, everything else is the same. Like the previous generation Z Roadster, it comes with a soft top, but the rear window has been pushed somewhat down lower. Nissan prefers the soft top because it reduces weight and allows for more trunk space. Look for the 370Z Roadster in showrooms in the next few weeks with a starting price of over $37,000. Coming up next, time for You Said It. Changing tires out here could be dangerous, but with these tires, I don't need to worry. Bridgestone. And now it's time for some of your feedback. This is You Said It, where I get a chance to respond to some of the questions and comments that you've posted on our website. DMAX5678 saw our report on the Hyundai Equus and really noticed the hood ornament. It prompted him to say, 
I respect Hyundai for going hard into the luxury market, but I think they have a lot of nerve putting that hood ornament on there. It doesn't even resemble anything, and to me, it makes it look like they're trying way too hard. D-Max, remember, we drove a Korean spec Equus, and I think you'll find that in the Korean and Middle Eastern markets where it's already sold, that hood ornament is probably considered popular. But I'll bet that when the car comes to the American market, it will not have a hood ornament. Even though it is spring-loaded, those things are worse than the bulls in Pamplona when it comes to goring pedestrians. And then Bill wrote in to ask, if GM doesn't sell Opel, can they continue to supply cars to Roger Penske, meaning Saturn? Bill, neither GM nor Opel are going to supply cars to Saturn after next year. That's why the word in the industry is that Penske is going to get Samsung in Korea to build cars to be sold to Saturns. And remember, Samsung is now owned by Renault. And Pedro Fernandez saw our report that GM's looking at building a $4,000 car for emerging markets and had this to say, GM has had a $4,000 car for a long time. It's a four-year-old Cavalier or an Aveo. And that's right. The challenge to coming out with El Cheapo new cars is that they're competing against good used cars that in many cases come better equipped. Hey, don't forget to tune in to AutoLine After Hours tomorrow, Thursday night at 7 p.m. live when joining me and Peter DeLorenzo will be David E. Davis Jr., guy who started at Road and Track, ran car and driver forever, and started Automobile Magazine. That is going to be a good discussion. But that brings us to the end of this show. As always, thanks for watching. We'll see you tomorrow.